Today we are looking at the fifth commandment, which um, plays out in different ways over the stage of life. First of all, I want to say, I want to think for a second about parents and children. I'm talking about uh, pre-adolescent children. Uh, this is where, when we talk about um, parents and child's relationship, the key word is obey. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. One of the first passages we taught our boys to memorize when they were little is, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. So, um, look, I'm not talking to children in this devotion. I'm talking to parents. Parents are very much in play here as we think about how kids and adolescents are, are going are to interact with this commandment. Parents are critical. If I was talking to children, uh, if I was talking to adolescents, when I, ta when I have talked to college students, I've gone a down a very different path because it's a different set of challenges that are being faced by that group. Uh, I am talking here to parents, and I want you to know that, that you are called upon, invited into, to partner with God in the development and care of your children. Uh, and they are called upon to obey you, not just to obey you, but to obey you in the Lord because there's a spiritual dynamic that is in play here. Now, it's worth noting, a lot of a child's responses are dependent upon the parents. Uh, and that's because the child's initial obedience really rests on the parents coaching and nurturing them. Deuteronomy chapter 6, we've got this uh, idea that uh, we are to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then it goes on and says, and we are to teach our children to do this. We are to, we're to teach our children to follow these laws. While we're walking, while we're sitting, basically, while life is happening, not just in a school classroom, but in life we are to raise our children with an understanding that they are to obey their parents. Now, when they become adolescents, right, then we sort of pivot a little bit, and we've got a different set of issues here. And now uh, we, are, we are seeing that, uh, that the, the level of control changes. I have used the four Cs. Uh, I think that's helpful. So initially, parents are caretakers for their children, right? They do everything. Then they become the cops, Right? They say, you, you can go outside, but you can't cross the street. You can do this, but you can't do that. A lot of rules. And they become, as we, as we move into adolescence, they become coaches. And they're, they're saying, okay, you're going to go do this. I'm going to watch your behavior, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to offer observations and say, more of this, less of that, pay attention to this, read the blitz, whatever. And then uh, on their way to being consultants, which are those who get called in um, uh, when asked, which is a hard thing to transition to, but that I think is the, is the right way to think about this. So uh, adolescence, of course, is a, is a challenging um, season for everybody. And uh, I, I take some comfort in uh, Luke chapter 2, where Jesus um, stays behind. Mary and Joseph have gone to Jerusalem, and Jesus stays behind, and they're traveling back. And and they're looking for Jesus. They realize a couple days in that they can't find him. So this is obviously, they don't even expect, like, I mean, let's just, let's just note this. They don't even expect that Jesus is going to be hanging out with them and walking with them, right? They're, they're probably making jokes. Do you think he wants to hang out with me? I mean, there's a time when your kids love to hang out with you, and then there's a time when you become really uncool. And look, adolescence is, the, is that season when they need to be putting a little bit of distance between themselves and their parents. They need to start to gain independence. They don't, they don't do this necessarily very well, and so it can be awkward. Uh, I want to be very clear. I, Jesus navigates this moment without sin, right? We know that from Scripture, that all the things that he does are without sin. So it's hard to know how much humor we can put in uh, to this Luke 2 account. But it's just worth noting, he's not with them. And there's a different set of, uh, I think, of, of rules or, or ideas that inform how parents are to shepherd and steward small children, you know, slightly older children, 
adolescence, and then beyond. So we're going to continue this conversation in parenting teens. Have a good day.